Hi guys, Tracy here, and I'm going to share a card process with you guys today. I don't do too many cards on my YouTube channel because I'm not really the greatest at making cards, and usually when I make a card, it's a scrap lifted card from a card designer. Usually I just go to the Lawn Fawn blog and check out the cards that have been made with the stamp sets that I own and that I want to use and then I um, just kind of copy it or usually I'll do some type of a spin on it to make it my own but I usually get my ideas from the Lawn Fawn blog. So I was on the Lawn Fawn blog the other day and I was looking for this card so I searched so a long time ago I had bought this stamp set and this is one of the few Lawn Fawn stamp sets that doesn't come with a, a a coordinating die. This is called Stay Tuned and uh, I love it for, I love the microphone and the radio but I really really love the TV and um, I like the kind of retro look of it. And so I knew there was someone who had done a pun on YouTube with the uh, little sheep from this set which is the Critters on the Farm which is a set that I've had for quite some time. So I knew that there was a pun on it on their website because I had seen it before and I just couldn't find it so I searched for the uh, Stay Tuned stamp set and lo and behold I found it. So this is the card that I was looking for and it was made by, I'll just shoot this picture up on the screen so that you can see it more closely. It says I love YouTube and of course U is E-W-E -E for the cute little sheep. Um, and it was made by Scrap Collector 57 and it was posted on the Lawn Fawn blog as one of the examples of a card that was made with the Critters on the Farm stamp set and the Stay Tuned stamp set. I thought it was pretty brilliant and I really wanted to make a card. As a YouTuber, um, I wanted a YouTube specific card that I could send to people um, as a little thank you for certain things that people do to support my channel. So I have some supplies out here that I plan to use for this card. And I have I have a sense of what I want to do. Basically, I'll just show you that, that card again. So Instead of having the card on a rectangle on a hard on a card background, I kind of want to make it seem a little bit more like a scenario. So I'm going to have a floor and I'm going to have the TV sitting on the floor and the sheep coming out of the TV a little bit more at an upward angle than a downward angle. And I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to fit that little that bigger sheep inside of the smaller hole in the TV, but I'm going to try. Um, to to slip the sheep into the into the TV, and I, I might have to cut the sheep in order to get it so that it's I want I want more of the sheep to be inside of the TV than uh, than this card has, and I want it to be kind of like coming up and out of the TV instead of up and down, uh, and I'm going to have a floor, and then I think uh, I think the background I thought about making it look like a wallpapered wall in the background, but I think I'm just going to leave it very plain and simple so that my sentiment will stand out, and yeah, so that's what I'm going to do, and I'm also going to make it be a horizontal card instead of a vertical card. So I have my supplies out here. I'm going to be using my mini Misty tool for some of the stamping. And I also have a block for some of the stamping as well. And I have the Stay Tuned stamp set from Lawn Fawn. And I have the Critters on the Farm stamp set from Lawn Fawn. And I also have the Critters on the Farm dies, which I'm going to use the sheep from, obviously. I'm going to be putting this whole card on a piece of watercolor paper and the reason I'm doing that is not because I'm doing any kind of watercolor background technique or anything but I want to have a really really sturdy white cardstock background because I'm going to be cutting out the TV and I cut out a couple of TVs before making this video just to see if the sheep will fit inside and, and it basically won't so I'm going to have to be creative about that. Um, but 
as I try to get the sheep into the hole in the TV, the TV kind of gets pulled and, and is easy to rip. And I just don't want that to, I don't want to have to worry about that. So I'm going to put it on this heavy watercolor paper. And this is 140 pound watercolor paper by Strathmore. And watercolor paper has a textured side that you're supposed to use for watercoloring, but then the back page, the back of the page is more smooth, and so that's what I'm going to be using is the back side of the watercolor paper. And this pad is really a great size. I love this. I'm going to buy more of it. I wasn't sure if, it, if I would like having this size, but it's 5.5 by 8.5. So it is the size of an uncut card. So I could just use this as my card base, but I think that would be a pretty expensive way to make cards. So instead I'm just going to use it for the face of my cards. And I'm going to be making about four of these cards at the same time today. So these two pieces of paper should make me four cards. And then I have some letters for my sentiment which I will, I have these Mini Market Peppermint and Ellie's Studio Black. I'm going to put those aside for now because I won't need those until the end. I have stamped up some sentiments that says just a little saying thanks. And then I have this paper from my Gray Scraps, which is a Tim and Beck paper. I love Tim and Beck. Of course, they're the, they're, they're the creators of Sassafras. And I just, I thought that this really reminded me of like a modern take on a sheep's fur. So I thought that this would be kind of a cool pattern for doing the fur of the sheep. And then I pulled out my 6x6 Kiss Kiss paper pad from Crepe Paper, and I pulled it out because of this pattern right here, which I'm going to use for the floor in this scenario. And then I have some white Stampin' Up uh, cardstock as well that I'm going to stamp my sheep on. I'm going to be using Versafine ink as my only ink, I think, today. And that is it. I'm going to get started. I'm going to start by making my card base. And this is a little trick that I do. I've changed the way that I do my cards so that I start with the card base because if I don't, I find that I never put a card on a base if I haven't made it already. So this is this is my way of tricking myself into actually completing this card. So I'm going to put you on fast forward now and uh, we'll see how this one goes. All right, so I'm starting with this package of 8.5 by 11 Brights cardstock and I just picked out two pieces of real red uh, cardstock from Stampin' Up! and I'm going to start by cutting these pieces in half so that they are eight they so that they are um, eight and a half by 5.5 and now I'm cutting some liners for them so I'm cutting these liners at uh, 5.25 by 4 and even though I'm cutting four cards. I'm, I'm creating four cards. I actually need eight of those liners and you'll see why towards the end. And so um, I did go back and make a few more of those off camera. And now here I am just trimming down the watercolor paper. So those liners were just made out of regular white cardstock. I use Whisper White cardstock from Stampin' Up! And this is the watercolor paper which I am cutting down to uh, four 0.25 by 5.5 and it's already 5.5 but I just took the little sliver of an edge off of it because of where the glue was where it kind of pulls out of the paper pad I just wanted it to have a nice neat clean edge and so part of the reason why I'm gone for so long here is that I actually um, ended up accidentally recording or not recording a good portion of making these cards. And so I had to go back and find some more wood grained pattern paper. And I just, all I could find was this pat this patterned floor um, as, as a substitute for the wood grain that I had there already. So anyhow, um, I'm going to go ahead and stamp out my TV now. So I need to decide where on the floor the TV is going to go. 
And so I have my MISTI tool here and I decided to put it over to the left there. And you'll see how when I stamp it once, because the watercolor paper is fairly textured, when I stamp it just the once, it doesn't come out with a very crisp image. So I'm double stamping all of these TVs and then I'm actually triple stamping it because then I'm going ahead and after I double stamp it, I'm going to put the floor in place and then I'll stamp it again. If I had tried to stamp this with the TV over the floor without stamping it underneath like I am right now, what would happen is I would have a gap in the image where the paper overlaps the other paper and I didn't want to have that gap. So that's why I'm stamping underneath and then I'm stamping over top and once I put those two images together it'll be a nice smooth finish without any gaps in the picture of the TV at all. So uh, the MISTI is really great for any kind of repetitive stamping like that that you need to do. Um, so with the TV having to go in exactly the right spot every time, the MISTI tool was perfect. But now where I'm stamping a whole bunch of sheep at all different angles and they could be anywhere and it's not a huge deal if I miss stamp, I can just stamp it over again. I'm just using the block for that rather than kind of flipping the hinged um, base up and down and up and down and up and down and having to reposition my paper it's just easier to use the block with that kind of rough stamping and so I stamped four, four sheep onto white cardstock and four sheep onto uh, the patterned cart the the patterned uh, paper and there's actually five because one of them didn't stamp out very well so that's why I stamped five and now I'm just using my big shot and I do have the magnetic platform now and so I'm just running the sheep through my big shot to cut them all out and just like that and I love the coordinating dies for the lawn fawn stamps they create just such cute little cutouts without having to fussy cut. And so I'm all finished now, so I was just putting them away. And I'm going to put away my Big Shot as well. And now I'm just taking those stamped sheep images on the pattern paper and I'm going to fussy cut all the way around just the wool. It's not fur, it's wool. <laughs> um, and when I fussy cut for this purpose, so this is for paper piecing, and when I fussy cut for paper, paper piecing purposes, whew, there's a tongue twister for you, I like to run my scissors right down the center of the image line. And what that will do is it will make sure that I don't have any gaps in my paper piercing, in my paper piecing. And it will also, um, I don't have to worry too much about if I'm cutting with a rough edge or if it's a little bit jaggedy or not exactly perfect. As long as I'm cutting down that line, then any imperfections when I layer the wool over the base image, any imperfections will be covered by the ink that shows through like the lines that show through underneath um, underneath the stamped image if if that makes any sense you'll you'll see in a second what I mean I think I'm going to come in really close first I'm going to put the floors into my rooms so I wish installing floor was this easy in real life or maybe my scrap room would have a better floor but uh, yeah <laughs> all it takes is a strip of ATG and <laughs> I'm just adding a little pen line along the edge of where the the uh, wood wood grain paper meets the background, just to kind of emphasize that the that uh, that line there, that seam is there on purpose. It's there to represent where the photo or sorry where the floor meets the wall. And so now I have my zig two-way glue pen, and see how when I put the wool on top of this of the plain stamped sheep it uh, kind of fills in the the image below fills in any gaps where my trimming was not exactly perfect on the wool and it makes really nice smooth lines and that happens as long as you're sure that when you outline you're outlining right along the gray like the stamped the black stamped lines
So there are my four sheep. They're all assembled. And now what I have to do is, oh, I just wanted to, before I lay my the edge of my hand on my project, I just want to make sure that I don't have any ink on the edges of my hands. And so I'm just taking my X-Acto knife. It's actually a Fisker's uh, craft knife. And I'm just running it along the inside edges of that TV so that all of my TVs will be completely hollow. Like the screens will be taken out of my TVs is what I mean. And I just have a self-healing mat that I'm using underneath this. And I left a little bit too much of the floor there. And I, when I have to cut across layers of paper, I start on the highest layer and drag my knife down off of the two layers and onto the single layer so that I don't have to try to go up a bump of from, from one layer to two layers. I'd rather go down off of a bump than go up onto a bump. So now all four of my TVs have no screens in them. And now I'm going to cut my sheep and I don't know exactly how yet so I'm going to start by cutting it like this and this is wrong so don't if you're making this card don't don't do it that way um, it's wrong because then a little awkward gap of uh, of wool shows that looks like it's very clearly cut with scissors so it doesn't look as realistic like that so I just trimmed it up so that it looks a little bit better and look at that cute little sheep he looks so cute hopping out of the tv like that <laughs> I love him. So then this is why I need two two liners for every card. And now that I know where to make my slit in my sheep, I can make it much faster. So now I'm just slapping a liner onto the back of it so that that sheep will stay in place. And I'm just making sure that I run a line of glue right over the sheep so that the sheep is stuck to the liner and it's not going to wiggle around uh, under that liner. So I'm going to do that with all four of the sheep. And I like to position it so that you can see the antenna on the TV so that the, the sheep's head isn't covering too much of the antenna. Oh, I think that looks so cute. And so now I'm going to start putting on my sentiments. So I have these typewritten parts of sentiments. Uh, they're sentiment fragments that I have, and I'm just uh, cutting them apart with my scissors and gluing them on with a little bit of Tombow Aqua Glue, which is really good for sticking paper to paper. And now these are Peppermint Mini Market stickers from October Afternoon, and I love the font of them, and I love that it has both lower and upper case letters because it means that I can sort of replicate the YouTube logo because YouTube has a capital T and then lowercase U-B-E-R and it's white on a on a red background so that really replicates the the tube part of YouTube and then the for the U part of YouTube, I had to use a different font because I don't have one that's similar enough to the actual YouTube font, but I did replicate it in that it's black on white and I used a capital letter for the E and then I used small letters for the W and the other E. And so now I'm just cutting out some more of my little sentiment fragments so that I can put them on my card just on either side of the word YouTuber. And so I just, all that I have to do is make sure that I get the R straight and then I can make sure that I'm just attaching each of the subsequent letters so that it's lined up with the R. So I just line up the R against the edge of the, not against, but I, I kind of eyeball it with the edge of the of the paper and then all the other letters end up being straight because of that. So now I'm just taking the other liner. So this is why I had eight of the liners because there has to be one behind the sheep and then another one here so that my card can have a place for me to put my sentiment. And so there we go. And I'm putting these cards on a red base and with the white insert on the inside, it makes them look very similar to the YouTube logo, which I really like. And now you see that white strip? For some reason, this one is too long. I'm not sure what I did wrong here, but I'm just going to 
trim it off with my my caterpillar crop and I love these cards they're so cute I can't wait to send them out to people so before I'm done I just have to stamp my little stamped by Tracy little stamp with a little sentiment on it that says something to do with staying up all night making a card so please don't throw it in the garbage um and then the other one just says created by Tracy so that's it All right, so here are my cards. I think they're really cute. They're nothing too fancy, but they're very much me. I love puns and I love lawn fawn cards and I love YouTube. And so they seem like the perfect cards for me. So it just says a little YouTuber saying thanks or just a little YouTuber saying thanks. You open it up and there's this nice red and white inside which is consistent with the YouTube color so I can put a little message in there. And I made my title be consistent with the YouTube logo. It's not exactly, it's not the same font or exactly, I didn't round the corners on the, on the uh, red rectangle because I just didn't think that it was the right size to really look like it would uh, like that would make sense and so and then another one says from one youtuber to another and so I really like these I think they're fun and it's I always find it hard to part with my cards I always because I don't make them very often so I'm going to really enjoy sending these out to some people who really deserve a little bit of extra special thank you uh, from me. So thanks so much for checking out my card making process. And, and thanks so much to Scrap Collector 57 for the wonderful pun idea. And the image of the sheep coming out of the TV is just so cute. So thanks so much for the idea for the card, Scrap Collector 57 from the Lun Fawn blog and uh, the, the pun is just adorable and I couldn't resist using it so thanks so much Scrap Collector 57 for the idea. So thanks so much for watching and have a really great scrappy week.